Hello, my name is Stephen Whittle and I'd like to welcome you to a tour of my studio. I'm an artist and I'm an etcher, I make prints. And I grew up in England. I studied fine art there. I studied at uh, Chelsea School of Art in London and Brighton College of Art in the 70s. And in 1980, I set up my own etching studio. I uh, worked at that time in, near Skelmersdale in Lancashire, in the northwest of England. And I began by making small colour etchings of the English landscape and selling them to galleries in different parts of the country. And essentially it's that studio that supported me and my family for the last 15 years. In 1992, I moved here to Fairfield, Iowa. And uh, that was quite a major move, as you can imagine. I brought a couple of etching presses and boxes and boxes of uh, inventory and office things and equipment as well as the household furniture, and as well as my wife and two children. And we've settled here in Fairfield really well. We think of it as our home now. I'd like to take a few minutes. So this picture has actually been hand printed from a copper plate. The, all the lines on the image are actually drawn with a needle in the copper plate, and then etched in acid and the acid etches out the lines so that when coloured inks are put on the plate it can then be printed. However, only some of the colours can be printed in that way, the blues and the greeny colours. All the bright colours need to be painted on with watercolours after the prints dry. So it's really a two-step process, um, first printing colour and then painting colour to make the finished result. And this etching is actually published in a limited edition. The edition size of 350 is marked down here. And this is the fifth print, so it's marked as 5 over 350. And that means that there's only going to be a total of 350 of these prints made. And when the edition is finished, I actually cancel the plates by scoring them through to make sure that no new ones can be made. This print's called Tea and Flowers. The subjects for these prints are drawn by me in pencil um, at the size that they're going to be etched in great detail before I start work. One of the difficulties with etching is that once a line is etched in the copper, it's very difficult to make alterations or erase it. And so I really need to develop the design in quite a lot of accuracy and detail before I begin the etching process. And I've drawn the different elements, the teapot and the vase, um, from studies from real antique porcelain. And I've drawn all the flowers from other arrangements. And then essentially I've um, created the design from all the different studies that I've made. The landscape in the background too is, is another study. So I didn't actually arrange the still life with these pieces and these flowers and draw the whole thing. I've really drawn details of it and then composed them together into the picture. I was really fortunate at the beginning of my career to have my work published by Christie's Contemporary Art in London and they had a major uh, publicity catalogue that got my work uh, quickly, not only around England, but around um, America and several other parts of the world. And then I built up my range of etchings and incorporated different kinds of designs, cottages, other types of landscapes, both smaller and bigger pieces. And then I began to show my work at trade fairs. I visited Tokyo and Frankfurt, where there were big international art trade shows, at each one gathering more customers and more galleries that wanted to give me exhibitions. So now I'd like to take you through some of the etchings and tell you a little more about them. This is one of my first and one of my largest etchings. It's called Meadow Flowers. It's an English scene and I took a special care with the accuracy of all the wild flowers in the foreground. Mm. 
This etching is called Lakeland Flowers and it shows a view of the Lake District. That's a part of northwest England near where I used to live. The lily of the valley are the flowers there and they're, they're nodding their heads towards the horizon. Rather as I imagine William Wordsworth's daffodils did just a few miles from there on the banks of another lake. And this is a very small piece, it's only about six inches across, and it's called Dove Cottage. It was actually Wordsworth's cottage, the home of the poet for many years. So this etching shows some of the lovely thatched cottages in a small English village near Oxford. I worked from photographs to get the buildings accurate, and then I drew the flowers from life. This is part of a limited edition of 250, which is now all sold out. This uh, etching is called Summer Conservatory and it makes a little group with the two that you've seen before. It also shows the way my styles change since I've moved here because I'm using brighter colors and more blue based colors and accenting them with brighter reds which I can get by using more flowers and floral subjects in the pieces. This is my first Iowa landscape and uh, people often ask me when I first moved here, you've been painting all these English thatch cottages all these years, how are you going to deal with being in the Midwest? And actually it took me about a year of living here before I began to really appreciate the inherent beauty of the landscape in this part of the world. And after about a year and a half, this was the first etching that I felt I could begin to capture some of that beauty in. Uh, this etching is called Winter Barns. It's actually two barns which are on the way up to Iowa City that I photographed one winter's day and then drew them later. And uh, in a way this summarizes for me living in Iowa and uh, why I feel so at home here. Um, it's a very peaceful place to live. It's somewhere where I feel not crowded, um, unlike England where one felt all the time the lack of space and lack of room on the highway and so on. Here I feel the space and I feel the settledness of the atmosphere and I feel the friendliness and resourcefulness of the people. And it's, they've made us feel very at home and we've really settled in uh, well and uh, very enjoyably into the lifestyle here and I just think it's a great place to live. Over the last two or three years I've been feeling that there was a lot of artistic development within me that just wasn't getting expressed in the etchings, it wasn't really commercial ideas in the same way that the etchings were. And uh, one of my purposes in, in moving to America was to begin to develop those themes in, in larger and more colourful works and be able to access a market here that was uh, more progressive. And so. Uh, from about one year ago, from about April 94, I began to work in really a new style and began to access ideas and inspiration within myself that had been not really touched upon since my art school days of the 1970s. And I'd like to show you now some of these pieces. And to begin with, I'd like to show you the Dolphin series and the Dolphin series really began after a trip to San Diego this January when we saw dolphins both in the wild, swimming down the coast in little groups and also up close in the sea world. 
And for me, the dolphins captured several things. Uh, first of all, they showed tremendous grace. The movements, the arcing movements, the shapes of their bodies, full of grace. And also they showed a kind of inner serenity and joy. They seemed almost to be saying with that little smile on the side of their mouths, why do you humans take life so seriously? And they even hinted through their appearance in mythology. One thing that distinguishes the new work from the old is that the new work almost always has people in it. And the old work, the etchings, never had any people. The new work is about people, their feelings, and their subtle perceptions of the world. Not just people have come into the pictures, but animals and birds who also talk to us, the viewer, through their expressions, or their color, or their setting in the picture. The heart shape and the heart theme are important elements. And also music. Music as an expression of joy and also as a link to another world. The world in which sound creates emotion. Parallel in so many ways to the world of art in which color and form create emotion in the viewer. People often ask, where do I get the ideas for these pictures? Well, one thing's for sure, I don't get the ideas from anything I observe in the outside world. Usually, the idea flashes into my mind in its seed form. An image and an idea or concept all rolled into one. I don't usually see the details, just a single thought that has both the image and the idea of what it means to me, all united. In fact, as the picture is painted, the degree to which the image and the idea stay united is often the measure of its ultimate success or failure for me. When I receive an idea, I feel I've got a sort of duty to paint it. It's like a contract I have with the sender of the ideas. I suppose I sort of think of the being or the energy that sends the ideas and imagine him or her saying, well, we gave him these ideas, and where are they now? Still in his notebook. No one will see them there. Let's not bother to send him any more. Let's find another artist who'll do them better justice. So I want to do justice to the ideas that I receive by bringing them out and making them real as full paintings. So I feel I don't really create the ideas from myself, but more conduct them through me from a greater source. And that's why I want to deal with universal rather than personal truths. This picture's more about polarity. The sleeping woman, the alert beast. The blue woman, the red beast. Set in a moonlit night. One of the great universal truths for me is the nourishing, nurturing power of divine love. And I call this painting Madonna of the Dolphins. The layers of encircling protection around the baby go out from the halo to the mother's hair to the trio of dolphins swimming around. Even the ocean waves part and turn back to assure the Madonna a space in her magical world. Why are the dolphins magenta and violet? The only answer I believe I can give you to that is that I drew their outline and I looked at them and those colors came into my mind as being just right for both their feeling and the feeling of the whole picture. And after that, no other color for them 
seemed even remotely possible. So how many... I call this painting Atlantean Chants, and it contains several rich layers of symbolism, not all of which I fully understand. You see, I believe that pictures can mean different things to different people. Each person finds their own personal meaning. Let me make clear my use of the word meaning. I'm not talking here about a purely verbal description, though word ideas will come to mind when you develop your meaning for the piece. But it's more than that, because the line, the color, the composition, and so on, indeed all the elements of the picture have a non-verbal meaning. They are suggestive and create feelings without the use of the mind's language. For these two lovers, the night has become like a womb, creating an enclosed space in which the energies of sea, sky and bodies can circulate and recirculate. Although full of polarity, they affirm that their source is oneness, the moon, the light in the night that guides their way. This is a large piece, it's about four feet across, and I call it Lovers and Dolphins. It's really a celebration. The ocean is teeming with life. The rainbow, traditionally the herald of peace after the storm, is out there in multiple forms. The figures are both a little off the ground. They're dancing a little as they begin to float up. And the flowers are a kind of bursting out like a celebration bouquet. Not that one lover may present it to the other, but that nature presents it to them both in honor of their love and in recognition of their being at one with the spirit of life. These paintings are finished in pastel, unlike the first few which were in acrylics. Pastels or colored chalks have a very soft, velvety smooth finish and they can be built up in many layers, creating very subtle and rich colors. I wanted to give this pair of lovers the sense of purity and attunement with nature. So I showed them as originating from nature, the woman from the bouquet of flowers and the man from the limbs of the tree. The multiplicity of nature is shown in the bouquet of flowers, which joins them and yet comes between their spiraling unity. This painting was inspired by my experience of power animals, something that one discovers in shamanic journey. And uh, the lion is related to the man. I've got that relationship going on at the bottom part. And I wanted to relate the woman to the eagle. She's, they're both also involved in musical instruments. The painting above is called The Awakening of Woman. And took many weeks to develop the different symbols and how they could be arranged one with another. On this side I have several paintings showing the heart value. Uh, two angels within the heart and also the heart with the tree. And this was actually a little painting inspired by a trip to Colorado in which there was this most glorious waterfall. And instead of portraying it just as I saw it, I put three nymphs bathing, bathing in the waterfall. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, looking at the different pieces and me taking you through them and some of what they mean for me. And I wanted to show you a little of my process of how I actually go about working on these. Um, I work in a notebook like this. In fact, I have several notebooks on the go at any one time. And 
as I'm getting ideas, I draw them out initially as a rough sketch, and then I work on that sketch, adding detail and developing the idea. Often when I start on a theme, I'll draw it in three or four or more versions, developing different aspects of it, maybe taking the figures and putting them in a different setting, changing the posture a little, moving the hands, moving the features. So this is really all one series that came from one inspiration. This is a second idea that is going to be developed. The next stage after that is, this is to enlarge the idea so that I can begin painting. And for this I uh, photocopy the picture small and put it in my uh, art projector and enlarge it onto the paper. This means I can uh, move from the Here's another dolphin one. I can move from the small scale of the drawing to the bigger scale of the paper without having to uh, scale up or make a grid. So I can keep the, the motion of it. The, it's easy to develop on the small scale when it becomes large. And from that point I then uh, begin to colour in the outlines and then work on it either in acrylics or pastels, building up with a layer of underpainting and then adding more and more layers of colour as I gradually begin to draw the elements of the picture together. In fact, it's usually the, the first and the last stages of the picture that are the most enjoyable. Um, getting the initial idea down and then at the end bringing it all together. Of course, in between, there are many, many hours of hard work, refining, changing and so on. I'd like to show you two or three more of the pastel paintings. This is one of a series that I've painted to do with planet Earth, to do with the globe, our world. And here I put the world taken care of by an angel, perhaps it's the guardian angel of the planet Earth. I've also shown a kind of light at the core of the globe. Again, the deep blue colour which surrounds so many of my pieces, I think of the blue as a, as a nurturing colour. The second piece on this subject, instead of the angel here, I've just got the face of a great being who's taking care of the earth, and as well as cradling the earth in the cupped hands at the bottom of the picture, the light in the, in the forehead of the being is actually somehow filtering down and illuminating the planet at the same time. I think of these pictures as taken care of pictures, whether it's the lovers who are taken care of, whether it's the planet who's taken care of, whether it's a little family group who are taking care of each other, one within the other. Essentially, they give the message of protection, of nurturing, of nourishment. This smaller piece I call Parents of the World. Again, they're almost angels and yet without the wings. Perhaps they're brother or sister. Perhaps they're the couple who gave birth to the planet. But again they're taking care of, they're cradling and, and nurturing the planet. And one of the things I feel about the reason why I make my pictures and the reason why I use these colours and shapes and symbols the way I do is I'm developing for myself my own view of the world in a way that I can really explore and come to terms with. I feel that whatever we put our attention on, whatever values we want to develop more in our lives, we create our own reality through doing that. 
And in these pictures, I'm creating a reality of tenderness, of being taken care of, of nourishment. And by exploring them through the many hours I work on them, I'm enlivening those values for myself, in my own emotions, in my own life. And as I share them with other people through ex exhibitions of my work, those values are being enlivened for other people as well. They, as it were, come across through the works and create, begin to create that reality in the world around us. I really hope you've enjoyed seeing and sharing in my brightly coloured world and it's been a great pleasure for me to be able to show it to you. Thank you.